Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, and Cancer Prevention. Why uh, worry about a cure when you can prevent it in the first place? We're on uh, number four in a series on uh, cardiovascular inflammation panels or cardiovascular inflammation testing. Again, what I have here is a few copies of the Cleveland Heart Lab's uh, inflammation panels. We have already covered uh, the most important uh, components of the panel, Milo, excuse me, um, microbiome and creatinine ratio, and plaque 2. We've also covered a less important one, HSCRP, high sensitivity CRP. Now we're going to cover myeloperoxidase. As you can see, this is mine. Uh, where is it? This is my panel, and I have a low uh, myeloperoxidase. The, I have um, 210, and the cut point is 470. Now, <clears throat> what is myeloperoxidase? Well, it comes from the white cells. It comes from a specific type of white cells. We haven't showed a full image of blood before. This is what this is. And the vast majority of these cells are red blood cells. And you know what they do. They have the red pigmented heme molecule and the hemoglobin that holds that heme molecule. Remember we talked about that in other videos with haptoglobin that cleans, cleans up uh, destroyed or oxidized heme. These are polymorphonuclear these, uh, leukocytes, or you also hear them called leukocytes, or granular neutrophils. Bottom line is they're white cells, they're immune cells, and they have these weird, unusual shapes in them, which is their cell, uh, the nucleus of this cell. We'll talk a little bit more about those because myeloperoxidase comes from them. So when you break down leukocytes, you have agranular leukocytes and granular. Granular just means that it has these little granules or pockets in them. And the vast majority of granular cells are the neutrophils that we're talking about. You see, 60 to 70 percent of them. You may recognize this over here, um, monocytes. Those are involved in uh, LP plaque 2 and um, foam cells that get involved with creating those hot liquid or necrotic areas of the plaque. Here's lymphocytes, T lymphocytes. They're also involved with monocytes. Now we're talking about another white cell, the granulocytes or the leukocytes. Now, let's talk about that. Let's go to the Wikipedia. They have an interesting description of it. Um, myeloperoxidase is a peroxidase enzyme. Well, first of all, an enzyme is a protein, and it's there to help uh, create a chemical reaction. The chemical reaction that this does is a peroxidase. Uh, you know, peroxide um, denatures protein, so it kills protein. It, it is part of what the immune system is using to kill and um, digest proteins from foreign bodies. It's encoded by the MPO gene on chromosome 17. It's most abundantly expressed in neutrophil granulocytes. That's what we've been talking about, those granular white cells. Now, um, they create antimicrobial activity. Now, let me uh, read the next sentence. MPO has a heme pigment, which causes its green color in secretions rich in neutrophils, such as pus and some forms of mucus. Now, let me tell you what that really means. And again, it's a little bit gross, so that's why they didn't... They didn't uh, describe it this way. When a child gets a cold and they get this mucus, a lot of it coming, the snot, and it has a green tint, that green tint actually comes from myeloperoxidase, believe it or not. And what we're testing when we test for MPO on the infl inflammation panel is myeloperoxidase. Now, <clears throat> Do, is it an important one? Yes, it is. Uh, I've got some issues with it, though. Um, it is by far the most common false positive test in uh, the inf inflammation panel. 
Why is that? Well, it has to do with those leukocytes and the, granul the granules within those leukocytes. Number one, if the, it's a very unusual test. Most people don't, a lot of people don't get it. And um, the venipuncturists don't know the specifics they need to do when they get this test. They have to spin it down within 30 minutes. Because if they don't, these white cells will begin to, to die, burst open, and release that MPO. The other thing that will happen is if they spin it down in time, but they put the tip of the pipette below the white cell layer, they'll still suck up neutro neutrophils or white cells, and they'll still get a false positive or high MPO. Now, why does that matter? What does that mean? Well, MPO, you may remember, um, I, I learned most of this and do most of this through uh, original training with Brad Bale. Uh, when I trained in preventive uh, medicine at Johns Hopkins, we didn't have this sort of stuff. It was a couple of decades ago. Uh, Brad's a very good doc. He and Amy wrote a book called Beat the Heart Attack Gene. They're talking about 9P21. In this book, they call MPO the joker. By that, they mean you could have everything else really good, but if you've got a very high MPO, uh, all bets are off, and it could kill you soon. You put that together with the fact that I just gave you, that it's by far the most common false positive, you see some of the angst that this test generates. Now, I respect Brad and Amy. They've got a lot of experience in this uh, work. So what I usually do is I explain all of this information to the patient, and then I um, say, we're going to retest it because it's often a false positive. But meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and get you started on the treatment. And guess what the treatment is? I'm getting a little reflection here. Sorry about that. It is melatonin. Simple old over-the-counter melatonin. So we get the patient started on, the, on melatonin and we repeat the test. Obviously, we do what we do with every patient after verif uh, verifying that there's disease or plaque or not, we look for the other components of inflammation. Uh, with a positive MPO, we're gonna be looking for all the potential root causes.